Okay, writing offers on short sales. It's so easy. It's so easy. The thing that you cannot do is you let the listing agent ever drive the bus. The buyer buys, the seller pays the commission. That's how it works. Without the buyer buying, nobody gets paid. The seller isn't happy. The listing agent doesn't get commission. So you need to control the action. And too often, the buyer's agents that I find, aside from ourselves and a few others uh, that are certainly listening to this right now, um, are not aggressive or very assertive. So they, they let the listing agent tell them how it's going to be. Well, we don't want to be adversarial. So what we normally do in a short sale situation is when we write the contract, we write the contract for uh, $30,000 uh, initial deposit zero, uh, additional deposit of $1,000 due upon short sale approval. So when you talk to the listing agent, you just say, hey, my, my investor buyer writes on two, five, 10, 15 short sales every day. And, you know, he can't possibly tie up $1,000 for each one. He is serious. The offer is uh, you know, aggressive one, he is willing to negotiate with the bank when the bank comes back based on the BPO value if it's within a range that he's comfortable with. So uh, the bottom line is you let them know uh, the experience of your, your agent. Uh, like for me, I can say, okay, well, last year uh, I settled 22 short sales and many more REOs um, in 2011, 2012. Uh, I sold a lot of REOs and short sales in that time frame with my partner and myself. And you don't even have to give a number. You just say, we're really well versed. I've listed and sold short sales myself um, or someone in your, part, in your office is a specialist in it or uh, you've closed them as investors in the past. But just stress to the listing agent, your goal is to get this done and to get them paid. And, you're, you know, if it's listed at, at $100,000 and they owe uh, $120,000 and it's been on the market three days, you're not going to offer $60,000 and the seller have and the seller sign it. It's just not going to happen uh, unless they're just crazy motivated. Uh, the record that I have had in my experience for an unpaid mortgage and they still lived in the property is four years. So the thing is, is that a lot of these homeowners, they can live in the property for free for six months, 12 months, 24 months or longer. So their motivation is not necessarily to get out of the property right away. So that might even be a conversation you have with the listing agent. Say, so, you know, I don't know how motivated your seller is to move, but what's good for me and good for, for, for your seller, what's good for my buyer and what's good for your seller is that, you know, we're going to write this offer and we're in the process and, and, and the negotiator and the bank realizes that we're working on a short sale Worst case scenario, the BPO doesn't come through, your seller gets to stay in a little bit longer, or the BPO value comes in a little too high. Um, you know, we, the buyer adjusts their offer, whatever the case may be, but they get to stay in the house longer. So writing an offer with zero initial deposit and a $1,000 deposit upon short sale approval should work with, I would say, 90 to 95 percent of all agents. If you explain it to them, what's in it for them, and that you want to make it work and you want to do whatever you can to make sure that they get paid. If the ARV is 200, the house uh, is listed at $100,000, needs $30,000 in repairs, uh, you know, I've already done the math. That that price works. So, um, you know, offering uh, 82, 87, you know, even as high as 91 
No, it's a wholesale deal, and that it could work because two hundred thousand dollars times seventy percent is a hundred and forty. We've already said the repairs are thirty, and it's that would be one ten, and it's listed at a hundred. So it's basically almost already, or it is already, a potential wholesale deal. So um, you don't want to have a listing for a hundred thousand dollars and offer fifty or sixty thousand dollars on the property hoping to get that in most cases depending on the condition you want to get the deal you want to get it through you want to make it happen and um, bank negotiators have have criteria and i think they're bonused on a lot of the stuff that they do so they want to get it done also they want to get things off their books so work on short sales you should immediately talk to your agent about writing on at least two short sales every day. And the worst case scenario, I talked to someone today in Illinois, uh, Shauna Brown. What happens if they all get accepted? Well, you pick up the phone or you email support at Fortune Builders or you do whatever and you reach out to all of us around the country and we'll just flip your short sales like crazy and everybody's going to win but don't think about what could happen as it's a negative possibility it's a positive possibility everything's a positive possibility and good things happen all the time if you intend them if you focus on them you think about them so my favorite phrases are thoughts lead to feelings and feelings lead to words and words lead to actions and actions lead to results so if you're thinking about doing something and you're feeling that it would be a good idea to do something and you're talking about doing something and that's where it stops nothing will ever happen promise i promise it'll never ever happen nothing at all but if you want to make it happen, then actions and results are the only things that will make it happen. You can be positive, you can be all those wonderful things, but if you don't take action, nothing will ever happen. So hopefully you found this useful. Start writing on short sales right away because they're not going away for quite a while. They're, well, they're actually never going away, but the volume is still going to be high for a number, number of years. So. Uh, get going. Get them, get them done. Get your agent working for you. And uh, like I said in a post earlier uh, today, um, if your agent is a friend or a relative and they have no experience with real estate investing, find a real estate investor in their office and get them hooked up. So now your family member or friend can learn the process from someone who's experienced, possibly sharing some of the commissions, or a referral fee just for knowing you. So anyway, I'm tired. I'm going to go spend some time with Sherry and go to bed. Good night.